Welcome to round four of my Live with a Professional. I'm Nia Harris. I'm a student athlete at Northwestern University, um, and I'm studying journalism and design. And I've kind of started this live in order to provide insight um, into the lives of professionals and successful people. And I am really excited to um, be interviewing a professional football player called Montre Hardich. He is playing for the Giants, um, and he has like a wonderful story, and I'm super excited to just talk about it. And I'm excited for the um, reaction that I've gotten for this live. And Montre, if you can request to come on, that would be really exciting. Hi, Montre. Hey, what's, what's up? up? How Not are much. you? Just chilling right now. Just hanging out. Nice, nice. Yeah. So you can hear me, people can hear me. Okay, good. I had some technical difficulties last time, which was not fun, but I figured it out, which is nice. So let me know if you can't hear me or anything goes wrong. Okay, I got yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I say so much. I've been waiting for this all week. I'm super excited because you have so much wisdom and I've been preparing and it's been really fun and I can't wait to get started. Um, and so I've kind of started my lives with a similar question um, just because I think it accelerates the conversation. Um, so Montre stepping foot at Northwestern, do you have any idea you'd be where you are today? Mm, great question. Um, initially, like I always thought about, you know, obviously playing at the highest level. Um, and actually getting an opportunity to play put in, and putting in the work and like seeing that pay off, I think it's been great. So I, was, I would say initially coming in, you know, I thought like, you know, this would be where I, you know, escalate and potential climb in life. So, yeah. Right. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, how can you know that this is going to happen? Like as your years accelerate, it's such an amazing opportunity. And I'm going to take you back a few years to your first okay. year at Northwestern. What was it like playing collegiate football after just getting out of high school? Um, yeah, it was, it was interesting coming out of college, um, definitely learning curve, trying to learn a new system, mm -hmm. um, on the field and, you know, obviously meeting new teammates, just, just trying to like grasp with those different, um, just difficulties, right? Um, because we're all coming from different walks of life and also stepping in, into a whole new, like, um, realm of curriculum and trying to figure out what I want to do in terms of education. So in terms of that, like, that was like just a learning curve and obviously coming from Georgia, like South Georgia, rural town, not really much going on and coming to a big city. Well, yeah. suburb, but next to a big city um, it was just a just a game changer in terms of trying to network, trying to just figure out who I was, my identity. I think that was a huge thing. So just trying to figure out football, my identity, what I wanted to do in terms of education and all of it's obviously like just meeting new people and just trying mm -hmm. to build from there. Right. Uh, I mean, it paid off that you went to Northwestern. Um, how come you chose Northwestern? Like, I'm sure that you had a lot of teams get recruiting you. What was the reason Northwestern was the school you wanted to go to? Yeah, um, initially, um, I was <laughs> committed to Georgia Southern. So okay. coming out of coming out of high school, I really didn't have a lot of offers. Um, <laughs> got recruited late. A lot of um, mid-major schools were interested. Um, I was in contact with Northwestern, like, my senior year, I think around, like, November. And all the scholarships had, like, filled up or whatever. And I was pretty much, like, still in contact, but just still waiting on the opportunity. Um, and finally got the late opportunity from Northwestern, like, a couple of days before signing day. And it was a no-brainer for me. I was like, if I, you know, get this opportunity, it has to be a business, business decision. Um, that's going to yeah. carry my career, something far beyond sports. So when I got that call from – Fitz and um, Coach Brown at the time, I was just like, yeah, I'm all in. So from then on, stepped into campus and then, you know, started making my way. So, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. I didn't I actually didn't know that you got um, the offer so late in, like, your se mm. senior year. What, how did you keep a positive mindset knowing that it was a few days before that signing day and then Northwestern calls you? Yeah, it was just, like, you already know. Like, I think everyone has an idea ideal of like what their self-worth is coming into I guess a situation whether that's recruiting um mm -hmm. you're looking to play the best ball and get the best education so understanding my self-worth knowing that I was you know much more than that I was just like whatever opportunity I get I'm gonna make the best out of it mm -hmm. and throughout that that time period I just honestly just prayed a ton prayed I was just like let me manifest keep thinking about this potential ideal that could happen or situation Right. So manifesting it, finally, you know, it planned out, got the call, and then, yeah, it happened. So throughout that, stayed positive. I was like, you know, 
with any given circumstances, like I feel like we're able to prosper um, throughout those different um, situations as long as we have a positive mindset and we show gratitude in different ways. So just trying to send off positive vibrations like that. So that was my biggest thing. That's awesome. How are your first yeah. two years at Northwestern playing and getting into the game and with the whole new group of people, especially guys that are older than you? Yeah. Um, definitely was definitely a learning curve again. Um, a lot of those guys were experienced, especially the juniors and seniors, even some of the sophomore um, guys who played. Um, so with that, initially just trying to learn where I can best fit in and help the team. I think that was my biggest agenda. So I played a lot of special teams. Coming in, um, got in a couple times. Didn't really make any, make any plays. I had like three tackles, I think. Um, yeah. Sophomore year, um, I had a lot more action. Got the opportunity to start due to um, an injury that happened. And then from sophomore year, made a made a lot of plays. Um, mm -hmm. It was definitely that. That was definitely a year where it was, it was a lot of highs and lows for me. Right. But in terms of like just making plays and being in the right spot, I was I was there. Um, I think initially mentally, that was probably my most challenging year. I think stepping into a new role, whether that's like somewhat of a leadership role, somewhat of you know a starter role, mm -hmm. uh, and so with that, obviously trying to balance um, academics when you're a starter, I think that was like the biggest thing because now I'm not only preparing like to you know, perform on the field, but also for these exams and things like that, and also trying to keep a social life. So all these different dynamics were playing a huge role <laughs> into like what I wanted to become. So I did a lot of um, just social fasting. Um, I think that was a big thing that I did, I think, just periodically whenever I needed it, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, that's interesting. I thought to ask, how did you time manage? Because I know seeing football players around campus, I know the schedule you guys have, you guys are up at like the crack of dawn and yeah. you have plays to memorize as well as exams to um, study for and write papers. Like how did you manage all of those besides social fasting? Like that's such an interesting thing that you did. What else, were there any other tips that you would give? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I'll, I'll say just creating a routine, just trying to manage out, plan out your schedule. So the biggest thing that, I, that my advisors will help me do is just write down, you know, every responsibility, whether that's tasks you have for each week mm -hmm. and whether that's the hours you want to get and the times you want to eat um, because it's one of those things like where, you know, you have to make time for, you know, your nutrition um, and obviously recovery was a big, was a huge thing for me. So I knew throughout those time periods I had to be productive and be efficient because if not, like time was going to lag and then my performance was going to lag overdue <clears throat> over time. And so just that persistent, um, you know, effort towards trying to, trying to fit, put everything into the schedule. Right. It, it ended up working out. It was just not, it wasn't perfect, but it got me through uh, what I needed to do in order to right. get where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. I'm sure you've learned so much. And you mentioned that there were some hard times throughout um, your career in college, especially injuries and stuff. How did you get through those rough patches? Yeah. Um, so my, my biggest injury actually was my um, senior year. Mm -hmm. um, after, I think we after we play IO again, um, yeah, I ended up getting a grade two strain in my hamstring. That was probably like the biggest injury that I've, I've had. And um, yeah, I sat out for two weeks and then we ended up like clinching the West of the Big Ten and then ended up playing um, in the Big Ten Championship. And I wasn't like, <laughs> I wasn't really 100%. I was really out there playing on one leg, but I was trying to give everything I had. Mm -hmm. And then that ended up affecting um, that. And yeah, I ended up affecting my draft status in terms of not getting drafted because like I, I wasn't really 100% trying to perform. Um, and it was one of those things that I just had to keep a positive attitude and mindset about in order to get where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't going to stop, you know, injury from, you know, stopping me from reaching my goals. So with that, just mindset, it was just like, okay, like I'm going to sacrifice something in order for the greater good. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the greater good was like trying to win the Big Ten championship. And I was just like, I don't want to regret this situation by not playing and things like that. I was like, if the NFL works out, it works out right. for me. <laughs> You're good. And um, yeah, so just that persistent attitude, like I'm, I'm in it for the guys and holistically yeah. it's bigger than me at the end of the day. I mean, that's awesome. And, I, and we're going to talk about the whole drafting process later. Um, 
but I kind of wanted to, somebody actually asked me this, a follower said, what's one thing you wish you knew going into college? Ooh. I know, good question. <laughs> that is a good question. One thing, okay. Um, I guess like, like it's, there's a lot you can't really prepare for in terms of things you're gonna encounter, uh, people you're gonna meet, situations that are gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, I would, I guess the biggest thing for me would, was just, uh, dang. Let me think about this one. Were there any like big things that you learned um, that just like really helped you get to where you are? Yeah, I guess the biggest thing is finding a, okay, yeah, finding a crew or finding, you know, a group of people that really do uh, fit the mode of what you want to, you know, potentially mm -hmm. be. And also like, don't, I, yeah, biggest thing I learned, like, don't, like, be in a group with people, if you're, like, one of the smartest, or, like, one of the people mm -hmm. that's leading everything, I, I think the biggest thing, like, for for people who kind of um, engage and, like, and have groups of friends, like, you need to, like, have people who are, who have different facets of life where they can, they can add value, um, I think that was the biggest thing, so, like, yeah. just lev leveling up your crew, I mm -hmm. think that, that allows you to, like, just navigate and, like, learn and want to, like, be around each other every day. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. interesting, I actually haven't really heard much about that from people, which is, I think, a really great lesson, like, having people that make you better is so important, especially because it just makes you become a better person and want to be a better person for them. Um, another question I had was, when did you know playing professionally would be a possi possibility for you? Yeah, um, my junior year, I started to um, pretty much hear the word in terms of just Cody. I think Rishaw was just part of our, like, directors, player um, engagement personnel group. He was just like, you know, teams are interested. You know, if you're continually, uh, you know, playing, being productive, mm, as you're being productive, um, it's it's going to be, you know, something that you can look forward to. And that was mm -hmm. the NFL. So just making plays, honestly, and just hearing my name buzz. Uh, whether that was on Twitter or, you know, Big Ten. Um, so, yeah, just making plays consistently. I think you, you kind of get that, like, um, internal feel that, you know, I have a chance to, like, you know, play at the next level, whether that's you playing against already guys who are projected to go to the NFL and you're making plays and yeah. locking their best player down. And, yeah, I mean, just just that simply. Um, and that was my junior year. I just – I kind of just felt that, that urge that, okay, like, I can do this and, like, yeah. yeah. What a, like, turning point. How exciting to be, like, in college and be like, I can actually play pro. Like, I actually might be good enough. Like, that is so fun. Like, what a goal to have. Yeah. Um, and actually, let's fast forward to present. So this past year, you played for the Miami Dolphins, which is incredible. You signed to them around, like, the end of senior year, which you, which you mentioned about um, being injured um, during the draft, and you had to take a different route. Can you kind of take us through that journey, what happened, and kind of explain a little bit of how that happened? In terms of like the initiate like the initial encounter with the Dolphins. Yes. So okay. ta take us through how you were injured. You can um, you weren't drafted, and then you yeah. became uh, you had to do a priority fee agent after that. Can you take us a little bit through that? Yeah. So coming out of college, um, had an injury, so I was pretty much on a balance. Um, I was actually still in school. Um, had to finish up like two more classes, so mm -hmm. I was trying to balance that and balance that around like my training and also rehab. And so doing that, I was just trying to, like, make sure everything was in place in terms of what well, that was my scheduling and things like that. So that was very rigorous in the, in the way that that happened. So with that, um, yeah, I changed my – I actually changed my diet. That was the biggest thing. Really? I'm not sure if I've told you this. So yeah, but um, – No, you haven't. Went, Tell us. Yeah, I went plant-based. So wow, actually, I didn't know that. Yeah, I went plant-based <laughs> plant and, like, just kind of just changed the – just my, my entire nutrition regimen – game plan lifestyle for a holistic change that I, that I deemed very important because I knew NFL, the NFL was something I wanted to accomplish and, mm -hmm. you know, potentially build a career in. So, like, doing that, I was just like, okay, like, I need to – I can't continually, you know, do something that – well, that was the last four years, last 10 years of my life. Like, let's let's change it up and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Like, get that – I started to, started to see the recovery, like, happen really, really well in terms of – just fast um sleep performance whether i was in the classroom was just a lot more just a lot smooth a lot mm -hmm. more smooth um yeah through that like i ended up running at 
the combine and, and do well. I was I was probably like eighty five percent. Probably should never ran, but it was just like the competitive. Someone should have just held me back with like a with, with the belt, like hey, like don't go out there. Insane, so insane. like, but uh, I ended up like running uh, the next next week at pro day, and I did a lot better. Um, got in the four fives, and then around draft um, day, I ended up not getting drafted, and the mm-hmm. Dolphins and like couple other teams were were interested um and yeah the Dolphins show a ton of interest in terms of wanting to invest and whether that was in financial whether that was opportunity reasons um they mm-hmm. showed and, um just really just a ton of interest and it was kind of a no-brainer for me at the time um uh, and so I, I ended up signing with them and in terms of that process um yeah I signed as an undrafted free agent uh got there i think around around this time actually and the first two days was like first day we got there they're kind of just walking us around and just getting us um settled and everything yeah and then the next two days was like rookie mini camp and those two days were just excuse me it was pretty difficult in terms of like yeah. i'm from georgia but coming back to south florida it was the heat was a little different for me uh <laughs> So I was like trying to prepare, yeah. but you can never really prepare unless you're in the environment training. And I got down here and uh, I mean, I did well enough. And then they ended up, um, I ended up signing the contract down there after those two, two days of um, doing rookie mini camp. And then, yeah, I stayed, I th- yeah, I ended up staying down there for OTAs. Mm-hmm. And throughout that process, just a lot of long days because I, I didn't really, I didn't realize that, you know, being a rookie, you had to do like so much just external things. They're trying to like, just, just introduce you to the NFL, just a whole new organization, whole new work life. So just that, like the responsibility and the task were just overwhelming at times. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the things that they had rookies? I mean, you mentioned that to me that you had so many meetings and things like that. Like what are some yeah. of the meetings that you had? Yeah. So just introducing you introducing you to just a whole new brand of life so in terms of like you are a person that has this particular status that is you know you can utilize it in in different ways while using your platform by giving back all these different um, Mm -hmm. things or you can jeopardize it and put yourself in a situation where you look bad upon whether that's Mm -hmm. in your current organization or whenever you're done with football so just looking at those two aspects the financial aspect of you know the motto, like whenever you, you make a team, like the type of money and taxes that you have to pay, the deductions yeah. that you have to pay to the NFLPA, um, so, so just all these different things that come out of, you know, your check and financial things that you don't really know about. Um, right. Also just building awareness around South Florida, like what makes South Florida um, unique, um, where are different ways that, you know, you can build your brand down there. Um, and yeah, just learning about the social aspects and norms of, what it means at the time to be a Miami Dolphin. So just really trying to learn the history there. So, yeah. And then, yeah. So. I mean, that's awesome. Um, what was it like stepping into the locker room for the first time? I mean, you're probably, you're, when you're at the Dolphins, you're around like superstar athletes. What is it like being in that experience in that environment? Yeah. It was, it was, it was cool. I mean, when I first, first got the opportunity to meet the older guys, it was just like, for me, it was just like, I know these guys are, you know, they have a ton of experience and it was just yeah. like me just trying to connect with them on a, just a common ground, nothing to like, Hey, like, you know, like not trying to be a, a, a fan of anyone and things like that. So just trying mm-hmm. to connect with them on a common ground and, you know, see what I could, you know, just figure out their routines and see what could best fit for me. And I think that was the biggest thing. Like, okay, I see that, you know, Rashad did this or I see that um, Bobby did this, you know, what can I add to my regimen and routine to, yeah help um make my transition a lot easier and you know they did a great job of helping with helping me with that that's awesome and i mean being a rookie can be really difficult sometimes because you guys are new and you're unexperienced compared to all the older guys how do you keep a positive mindset within your first year of being professional yeah that's a great that's a great question so beginning of the season or majority of the season i was on the practice squad and with that it was tough. It was like, you know, like you, you have this personal desire and feeling like, you know, I deserve to be playing. I deserve to exist. Right. Um, yeah. And I have to shout out to the, you know, the Miami um, player engagement group. We would just have like 
our, you know, breakfast club talks. And it was like a time for us to like vent and like actually like gain knowledge and perspective from um, other players who weren't playing or even other staff members who had just stories. So the opportunity to do that and like learn about, you know, what could I could potentially focus on during this time in order to continue yeah. to, to be uh, consistent. And I created a visual cue, um, which says, just, just keep working. Um, mm -hmm. it's actually like on my door, like as soon as I walk out, like, you know, how like <laughs> Northwest, you have like the trust yourself, like, um, yeah. um, four by four thing, uh, board that we use to tap. So like, yeah, before I leave, I just look at it and say, keep working. And, uh, yeah, it's just a daily reminder, just having that visual cue where, you know, there's going to be obstacles throughout your day, um, and throughout your life. So if you have something, a foundation to, to look at and re remind you, um, um, you know, just to keep working. And right now I'm actually thinking about getting another visual cue on my, on my wrist. And it's going to say, just breathe, you know, That's whenever. Awesome. Yeah. So it's just, just those little things I think help. Yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. You're so humble and you have your um, tactics that make you have a positive mindset. And I think that's awesome that you've learned throughout these past years. And so you can offer so much wisdom to people. Um, and actually, what are you, has been your highlights from the past season? Yeah, I think the biggest one, um, I don't know, they're all cool. I'm going to focus on two. So right. the last game of the season, we beat the Patriots. Yeah. Um, that was, and I played a ton. I was primarily on third downs and played some special teams, but got the opportunity, you know, to, to shut out the defending champs at the time in their home place. And they're looking to get a first round by. And it was one of those like <clears throat> surreal moments. Like you come all the way up from like hot, hot Florida to go to, to Boston and um, you get the upset. And I think a lot of people were, you know, obviously counting us out to mm -hmm. go up there and like, you know, get the win on Tom Brady. I think that was, you know, crazy and just you know just really fun and um have to, and this past christmas i had the opportunity to adopt a family um for our like community outreach program yeah. and with that it was just an opportunity so i was like the leader one of the leaders in the group and we kind of like just shopped around and like looked at families and their situations and yeah. looked at families that kind of resonated um with you know, what we're looking for in, in terms of just people who need help. And yeah. so with that, ended up adopting a family. And what that what that means is pretty much like pouring um, goods, whether that's things that they need, per se, mm -hmm. and things that, you know, they want. So it was a single mother, and she had four kids. And it was a group of, I think it was four or five of us. And yeah, we just ended up like buying them like, things that they want I know like some of the kids were interested in cooking uh, some of them were like interested in football just all these different like uh, mm -hmm. you know things you don't really think about so just taking the time to reach out to a family and we ended up giving them tickets to our last home game versus the Bengals last year and so just seeing you know they're seeing them happy um, and you know just seeing the warmth on their faces was just everything because I know a lot of families don't you know, have the opportunity to go to games or get the things they want for Christmas. So it was just an opportunity for us to, you know, share a Christmas or just a holiday with people. So that was great. Yeah. Manja, that's incredible. What a great way to use your platform. Like, I'm so touched. That's fantastic. I love that you did that and that you shared that with us. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, what's a, the best piece of advice that you've gotten from a coach or a player at the Dolphins Ooh. or something that you've learned from them? Um... I think like to normalize negativity um, okay. and to, uh, yeah, just what that, yeah, to make the most of your failures. I think um, you see, you know, whenever someone's at their lowest point, they have the opportunity to obviously elevate throughout those situations, yeah. but also, you know, not, but the ones who do and the ones who are persistent and the ones who, you know, ask questions and, you know, look to improve themselves. Like you see that, huge growth from year one to year two or from being on you know a team this year versus next year you kind of see that growth and so just being vulnerable um realizing that you know you you made mistakes and you have the opportunity to grow from them and you know be the person that you truly want to be um and i think that was a testament to you know last year not playing and then i have an opportunity to play and showing coaches that i, I can play like at this level so yeah 
That's awesome. What was it like getting in your first game? Like when you found out you were going to play with like, that can imagine how yeah. that felt. Tell us about that. So yeah, preseason, like preseason was, was fun, but it just was not like, I was like, okay, preseason, play NFL ball, but then like the regular season is totally different. Mm -hmm. and so first, first game versus the Eagles, I'm out there. And I like just look up, it's like one of the surreal moments. I'm like, okay, I'm actually here. Yeah. So you start to like internalize like everything. You're like engaged with everyone. I'm, I find myself like kind of like, you know, turn on looking at the fans. I'm like, all right, I need to focus. I'm tripping right now. <laughs> um, but it reminded me of like uh, like a coliseum and like people had come to see like this this battle and i was just like i'm a gladiator <laughs> <You know? laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> so i was like so i was like okay like when i'm out there like everyone's like watching me it was like this like in college like obviously i played in front of like thousands of fans but it was just a little different i was just like i'm out here with the best of the best yeah. um so that's what it felt like and it was it was actually you know pretty dope had uh got my first tackle in my first game and I was like you know like I can do this it was just like flying around having fun making plays and we ended up getting the win um last second victory and it was just like that's actually where the this picture came from that picture's awesome uh, yeah <laughs> I know right um yeah it was just like the spur of the moment it was just a great time yeah. That's awesome. That's I love the gladiator thing. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're a big shot and you alum, and you're now in the professional leagues. Has there been any perks to being an NFL player? Ooh, any perks? Well, you get verified on social media. <laughs> Huge. You get the blue check. That's you get the blue check. Like people respect you and look at you different with the blue check. <laughs> so yeah, the blue check has solidified a lot of things in my life. Awesome. When did you get it? What was it like waking up and seeing it? Like, did you know it was going to happen? Or did you just, like, did it just show up once? Mm. So I talked to my agent. He was like, yeah, man, we're going to work on getting you um, verified. You know, that's wow. that's, the, that's the thing to do. I was like, yeah, you're right. We should do that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I kinda, yeah. <laughs> so, actually, I got it uh, last year, like, right before the draft. And I was like, dang, like, it didn't really feel different at first. And I was like, yeah. okay. But this is pretty cool. And then, you know, you start to see, like, uh just a different, like, um, I don't know, attention you get. So, That's yeah, just, yeah, just with that, it was just like, at first it was just like, okay, cool. But then you start to see, like, the benefits from it, just the attention, the people you're able to interact with. I think that was really mm -hmm. cool. What are some people that you, like, what are those benefits? What are some people that you can interact with because of the blue check? Yeah, yeah, just, like, you can kind of tap into a different network of, just building like whether that's building your brand whether that's a you know football brand or things you want to do outside the community like um yeah so if you're reaching out to you know different organizations they they understand that if you're a football player you have like some type of solidified role um in your job like they're looking to help and like looking to build their brand also so like connecting it's kind of like creating this huge like social network cloud uh, that allows you to gain access to their their network. So it's just like, a, it's a trade off. Um, I think that's something that you want to always try to create and uh, continue. Awesome. So yeah. That's awesome that you have that um, advantage and that experience to like go down. And I think that's great. Um, sure. Okay, Monte, I'm going to get into a touchy subject real quick. Ooh. So everyone, last Sunday, I okay. called Monte, um, <laughs> talk about the live and asked him if I could be on it and or if he could be on it, sorry. And we had a great conversation. Like, we really bonded, and I got to learn a lot about him. And he was excited about the live. I was excited. Like, he has a great story. And we ended the conversation. It was great. We were going to have the live at the end of the week. And so that night, I am um, doing some, re some research. I was going to make my promo for Montre so I could post it. And I looked him up on Google, and I say, Montre Hardage, Dolphins, and I see Dolphins waived four players, Monte Hardage as one of them. And my heart sinks. I'm like, what? Like, I just talked to him a few hours ago. I'm kind of freaking out at this point because I'm like, I really, I'd love to still to do the live. I know he's probably in a crazy mindset. Like, I don't even know. I just met him kind of. And I'm like, what do I do? Do I call him? So I decided that I'm going to call him on Monday, which is the day after. Day after comes, I'm like freaking out all day because I'm like, how do I, like, how do I speak to you, you, you about this? How do I speak to Monte? Like, we just met. Like, I don't. Obviously, I'm a kind of a stranger. How is he going to really open up to me about this? And so I, I FaceTime him on Monday, and um, I'm like, hi, Montre, like, how are you? Um, and he greets me with a smile, and he's like, I'm okay. And 
we have a conversation and he has such an optimistic mindset about the whole situation. And I was so impressed and taken aback the fact that he was so positive. Um, Manchu, how did you keep that mindset? How did you know to keep going and to know that like there is possibility that you could, it, there, there could still be success in the end? Like what kept you going? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I touched on like normalizing normativity. Mm -hmm. uh, me uh, normalizing uh, what is that? negativity, sorry. And uh, so, yeah, what's that? I always had like, you know, I figure it's going to happen. It's going to happen to every athlete, you know, you're going to get released. Things are going to change. Uh, you're going to get in a new system. So I knew that going into it, I just had to keep keep a bigger picture in mind. Um, and just with that, you can only control what you can control. So I knew that was something that was out of my control. And I knew, you know, whatever my next steps or next team would be, I knew that, you know, they're, they're looking to invest and they, they saw something on film or they knew something about me that, you know, that bringing me along their team would be something that's productive and yeah. potentially um, successful. So just with that, I actually, you know, I just worked out, walked around, just try to clear my head. Um, and, you know, just thought about those few things. And, mm -hmm. and you look at life, a lot of things happen. Um, and it kind of just out of your, out of your control. So it's just, yeah. it's just about how you respond, how you perceive the message. You yeah. can either learn from it or, you know, continue to kind of sit back and kind of wait. But I was just like, you know, I'm going to just continue to love life. I think that's the biggest yeah. thing, especially at times right now, like, it's, un it's a lot of uncertainty for a lot of people. And like, for yeah, me, I'm right. just like, you know, I just got to stay positive. There's a lot of people out here who are busting our ass in different, different facets of life. So I'm like, I need to continue to do the same. So. I mean, I remember we had a conversation. You said that you still do the live with me. And I really respected that and admired you for it. And then here comes Wednesday. And I find out that Montre gets picked up by the New York Giants. And I'm, I literally... <laughs> like was screaming in my room. I was so excited for you. Like you deserve yeah. it. And it was fantastic. And I know I reached out to you and I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. What did it feel like finding out that you got picked up by them? How do you feel to be a giant now? Uh, it feels great. Um, still trying to learn about the organization, but mm -hmm. the D coordinator was actually D coordinator for the Miami Dolphins last year. So I have a relationship with that and also have a former nice. teammate. Mm -hmm. um who were who's with the Giants right now also and so like just understanding like I'm stepping to a, a new organization but I also know the system because he's bringing the system um that he taught last year so it's, it's kind of like me kind of stepping in a new ram a new ram of just learning about the environment that I'm in the people mm -hmm. but also understanding the curriculum that that comes with it so I think it's kind of a trade-off um yeah I'm just looking forward to you know going up there after you know everything comes down and, you know, just making plays and being part of the team. So. Yeah. I mean, congratulations again. I'm super happy for you and I can't wait for your next steps. Um, going into a new team and a new city, how are you going to prepare? What are your goals for the future? Mm, that's a great question. So yeah, just coming in and seeing where I can just help the team. Like, cause I'm like, I'm just trying to come in and win. Obviously yeah. guys are trying to win. So like whatever best fit the coaches see for me, uh, whether that special team is playing on defense a ton. So just coming in with a great attitude, um, trying to make everybody better. Um, and, yeah, with that, and see, what, see, where, see where that goes. Because right now, um, the overall objective for every team is obviously the, the one, the big one, right? Yeah. Um, but we have to get through the, the patches of installing um, the new system because it's a new system for the offense, defense, and also special teams. So I think that's the biggest thing for us is to kind of create chemistry along the way. Mm -hmm. um, so that'd be great. So the tighter we are, um, um, for, for sure, the, the better we will play. So looking forward yeah. to that. That's awesome. How is, um, I mean, doing NFL with quarantine? I'm sure it's over Zoom. How is it working out? What are you guys doing? You can see me, yeah, okay. Yeah. You're so good. we meet four times a week um, and, that's, and that's through Zoom. And it's, it's up to two to three hours and we're kind of just going over install and and things like that like today we play like a jeopardy game of like uh of like the facts and like the terminology for the defense and things like that so we're like competing so it's still like competitive in different ways yeah um so competing against each other whether that's about the past basics run basics um madden trivia um the giants trivia just all these different things that keeps you engaged with you know learning and we're working out right now <laughs> i have a little like set up i got a bench a ton of dumbbells got some weight vests yeah so i'm out here just 
on the balcony, uh, stretching, you know, stretching out and doing some yoga also and go out here to the parking lot or either, either the park and just kind of like run and stuff like that. So that plus I have, a, I have a former teammate downstairs, so we kind of get together and do things That's together. Nice. So yeah. fun that you have your, team with your former teammate with you. And what a fast turnaround, like the fact that you're already obviously meeting with the Giants already, but um, crazy. I'm so happy for you. That's happening. Um, here's it. a question from a follower. Okay. What do you project the future of professional athletics in a post COVID-19 world? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, it is good. In terms of, yeah, that's a great question. In terms of like NFL, I think I can only speak for the organization that I'm a part of right now. Um, our plan um as far as right now that i know of is to continue with the zoom for the next how long however long otas is for the next two or three weeks and then they're gonna like renegotiate and look at the objectives in terms of you know is the the curve flattening and like what is the projection towards training camp which training camp is like last week of july going into august um, for preseason yeah. and kind of make it their initial goals and objectives there uh, whether that's pushing it back um, maybe a month, um, I think that's their whole objective. Objective, But in terms of, I don't really know because, like, it's it's a virus. It's, it's an outbreak right now. So it's something I, I don't, I'm not an expert in. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, so I'm yeah. just playing the, yeah, just playing the weight game just like everyone else and, and see, you know, see what happened. I'm, I'm all about health so and wellness. So and with that, like, I'm trying to do the best. I think we should do the best for our, you know, for our bodies and for, you know, right. for humanity in general, so. Yeah, you're so right. I mean, good, that's interesting. And um, thank you for answering that. Um, I actually yeah. have a few more from followers as well. Okay. Um, one other one asked, what is your pregame ritual? Ooh, pregame ritual. If you have one, which I, yeah. I have a feeling you do. Mm, that's actually a great question. You know what it is? Is there anything? Okay. It's uh, it's actually I have um, Skittles before every game. Skittles? Just either Skittles or mangoes. It's kind of weird. Interesting. What saw, um flavor? Of Skittles? Uh, just original. Original. Yeah. Mangoes. Mangoes yeah. is actually my favorite too. How funny. Oh yeah, I, it just became mine. Like uh, as soon as I got down here, I actually like eat mangoes like every other day. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. So. I would. I was not expecting that. That's. Yeah. I, when did that start? I started in college. Actually, I started with the dried mangoes, and I was like, ah, let's try like the actual like, Excellent. you know, mango. Like, and then I started doing that. And I started having one before every game, and I was just like, oh, this is legit. So if I didn't have Skittles, I always had a mango. Like I had mangoes there at the facility, <laughs> or I had them like bring them, <laughs> and they're like, okay, we have mangoes, and uh, and wow, cool. that's nice. So. Yeah. Um, and where did the Skittles come from? Like, did uh, that start in college as well? It was just, like, kind of random. Uh, like, I always just wanted something sweet for it, like, before a game. And, like, Skittles were just the thing or gummies. But I never really liked gummies. I kind of liked the Skittles. So I started that, like, junior year of uh, college. It was just, like, low-key. I didn't really tell anybody. I'm telling people <laughs> now. But it was just Because like, I know, like, uh, Marshawn Lynch has the Skittles, like, thing whatever but it was not even like based off that it was just like oh, i kind of want something sweet for it so, that's so funny yeah i'm so glad somebody asked that question it was interesting yeah um it's actually kind of time to open up questions for anybody that wants to ask so we'll wait for that so if you have a question just type it up and we'll pick and choose um but while we wait for people to ask questions i have mm -hmm. some more um let's see how is it getting a bunch of new gear especially being Ooh. professional. I'm sure you get so much. Like, what is it like getting that? Yeah, uh, it's just a ton of like, yeah, it's a ton of apparel. You kind of just never want to run out. I mean, you know, being a soccer athlete, yeah. it's it's like, okay, like, what should I wear today? Should I just wear something comfortable, chill, some sweats or um, mm -hmm. things like that. But in terms of like, just getting gear and stuff like that, I think it's, it obviously it's a lot, but um it's an opportunity for me to just kind of give back uh, to people who actually need gear. So I, I look to do that. Well, that's my little bros, my little brothers, uh, or just family at home. So with that, that's just really cool. Cause like you have the luxury of getting free gear. So if you're not going to use it all, or you have way too much, you should just do something that's very organic. Right. So that's something yeah. I look to do. Uh, that's awesome. But yeah. 
Um, <laughs> what advice would you give to a high school player that wants to play college and then hopefully professional one day? Ooh. Hmm. I think uh, obviously going to college, like you have to be ac academically eligible. So with that, I think that's, you know, that's the best thing um, with that situation, just making sure that you're able to get into college. Um, and also like with that, um, I think, you know, creating a holiday tip is also important. So, you know, showing your qualities, showing everything that you can provide um, as being an athlete or just for a team, we're looking to give you a scholarship. So just putting, you know, the best thing on them. Um, and also like, I think nowadays, like, you know, using the advanced technology that we have, like just putting that yeah. out there, you can market yourself nowadays, like being in high school. And that's, I think that's great. Uh, so, you know, just with that, uh, market yourself, like on these different platforms in the right way to get exposure to colleges. And then, you know, for people who are looking to, you know, play pro, um, I think, you know, the, the ability or just the objective of never stop learning. Um, so like, you want to show these coaches um, different administration, you know, just people you're in act with that you have the ability to learn in different facets, <clears throat> in different ways, and you have the ability mm -hmm. to develop and adapt. Um, so yeah. Awesome. We actually got a question from AJ Turner and he says, okay. Yo Montre, any advice for, uh, for athletes like myself who are entering their first Ooh. year of being a professional athlete? Hi AJ, what's up? What's good, AJ? Uh, that's a great question, bro. Um, dude, just ask questions. I mean, there's a lot of like vets out here looking to, you know, to give back in terms of like helping guys like make the squad or like get an opportunity or just like building, you know, um, their craft. So just, just being like, you know, an advocate towards, you know, what they do. And also just being yourself at the same time. I think you see a lot of, uh, you see a lot of interactions and uh, relationships grow over time, just like you've been organically who you are. Um, and that's the biggest thing. So just reaching out and just showing your, you know, just being genuine, being organic. I think that's, uh, that's, that's kind of like what I took and, you know, what, what you, um, and what I saw in terms of like how I created and had the opportunity to kind of just build these different relationships. And yeah, I mean, everyone has this human connection. So it's just like, you know, you be yourself. And also just ask questions, ask the right questions. I think the right questions are things that, um, you know, you deem are important. I think it's obviously mm -hmm. subjective, but whatever's important to you, I think those are the right questions. That's awesome. Great sure. advice. Yeah. Um, somebody else, uh, there's actually two questions this person asked. One is, what motivates you to become the best person and player that you can be? Ooh. Uh, the biggest one. Um, especially coming out of my situation at home, was just changing my trajectory in life. Um, whether that's financially, uh, whether that's socially, things like that. I always had this agenda, wanted to create a just a new brand of of life for for what I you know what I currently grew up in. Small town, not really having a lot of opportunity. A lot of people there don't have opportunity, and and it's hard to 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 not make it out if you're not. Um, athletically gifted and I knew that I was so I was like okay I can't waste this opportunity this is an opportunity for me to build something that was just bigger than me and so with that um yeah just just being persistent in those rounds I think really mm -hmm. helped me to, to continue awesome the same yeah. person also asked um since you said actually you're from a small town it said yeah. how do you how did you adapt to a large university coming from a small town far away definitely had a yeah like I um having supporting cast uh so like I said trying to level up your crew like you really do have to be strategic in the way you want to move um whenever that's a transition transition such as going to college like you want to like find the find people who are who are going to make you better and mm -hmm. so with that I had a great mentor and I had couple people from home who are just organically you know trying to help me out and also just having the opportunity to have great brothers on the team we're, we're all looking out for each other so shout out to the NU fam for that um and yeah so just having trying to create a good supporting cast or, or trying to develop um a situation or or I guess uh, a network where they're going to benefit you so just trying to expand and grow my network i think that was the biggest thing that helped alleviate a lot of um concerns and questions that i had 
Awesome. Yeah. Great. And I'm sure this kind of question, this next question kind of, you kind of answered it, but I think you can still mm -hmm. offer some advice. And it said, it's from another follower. And they okay. said, what is some general advice you'd give to a college student who's preparing for the real world? Ooh. Oh, that's great. That's a great question. Um, so there's obviously things you can't prepare for, but um, I remember um, Peyton Manny actually coming to speak to us. Uh, I think it was my sophomore year, junior year. And yeah, it was actually just a great moment, you know, um, NFL legend coming to break knowledge, just <clears throat> spill knowledge and, you know, share the moment. And he just pretty much like, you know, came in and he wanted to talk about, you know, what does it mean to be a pro and, and how to be a pro and whether that's different facets in life. Um, right. whether that's, yeah. So it was just like, with that, what I took away was, um, preparation is everything. Obviously you can only prepare for so much and whether that's a climate that you're going into, going into and trying to perform or, you know, just a new like company that you're trying to adapt to the culture. So with that, just showing professionalism, regardless of um, the situation that you're in, people are going to see, um, you know, the genuine, the, the, the diligent effort, you know, towards you trying to present and be class, show classy, um, you know, just whether that's you trying to show class or you just trying to be organic, people are going to see the true side in which um, you can add value to the organization or to whatever um, firm that they represent. So I think with that, just showing your professionalism, um, whatever that means to you, and going in with a great attitude and, and preparing uh, to come in to learn or to adapt to whatever's um, given to you in any situation. Because yeah. with that, like going into Miami, like I didn't know like, you know, what to do or how to interact with people, but I knew how to present myself in, in a way where I was personable and things like that. So it was just those yeah. different things. Um, so just look at different attributes, look at, look at attributes that you deem as, that you deem as quality, um, that you deem as very, very strong um, attributes for you. So whether that's talking, um, whether you know, talking in a professional manner or, you know, just greeting people, just a little bit of things like that, um, I think will take you a long way. And, yeah. That's awesome. And I mean, I think you've really honed in on being a professional in terms of your athletics and the way that you present yourself as well, like the way that you've spoken, you're so well spoken. And I'm really excited that you've given so much wisdom. And I have one more question. It says, um, when and why did you fall in love with football? Ooh, um, it started a while back. I remember at first my mom wouldn't let me play, play ball. And so just that, like, so my dad, he was a huge, he's a huge football fanatic. So always growing up watching football. I don't, I can't even remember the first time I was like, yeah, like that's something I want to do. But I do remember like the first time I actually wanted to put on some pads and like go out there and mm -hmm. run and, you know, get touchdowns and things like that. Yeah. And I was like, uh, that's like third grade and I got the opportunity to actually do it in sixth grade. And so with that, it was just like, okay, no brainer. I started playing running back and recreation. And uh, yeah, I remember like my first time getting the ball, like had like a 20 yard explosive run. I was like, oh, yeah. they, they can't stop me. Next thing you know, like I had like, they ended up stopping me like five times in a row. And I was just like, ah, oh, dang, like, uh, <laughs> you know, like I need to figure this thing out. But you know, that was like the learning and the learning curve of everything. But that was the day I found out, you know, like, okay, I can do this first day of right. That's awesome. I love that <laughs> too. Um, Wise Kid two two nine asked, "Do you okay. have any uh, financial advice to young athletes that are about to turn pro?" Ooh, that's uh, that's actually a good good question. Appreciate you, <laughs> Wise Kid. That's right now. So the biggest thing. So credit. I think credit is huge. Credit is huge. Um, so coming into um, you know my professional um, opportunity, I had to. I don't know. Like, I forgot what why I got a credit card. But anyways, I think uh, finding out, I think becoming an authorized user on your parents or someone you so dearly trust, whether there's a parental figure, um, having the opportunity to to be, at, be an authorized user on their name, you can also build credit. Um, if you don't want to particularly use credit, um, per se, because you're not good with money. And I think a lot of, at least athletes that I know in the room, don't really know how to manage money. 
So I don't know how to build credit. So with that, I think it's something that you should consider. Um, if your parents are not, have, have not really put you on their credit card as an authorized user. And also, um, if you're looking to get a credit card, I think, and you're not really good with money, you should get a secure credit card. And they're, they're I know there's certain, certain banks that have those. And it's kind of like you, you have a, you can put a um, security deposit um, on the credit card, well, let's say $200, and you can't really go over that limit. So it's like a debit card, and you're still able to acquire credit through that. Um, so those are like two examples that I would potentially give to people or, you know, athletes, young athletes who want to enter the pro um, atmosphere and want to potentially buy something and don't really have the credit. Start trying to look at ways to build that credit um, now, uh, whether that's just small purchases, just trying to like, because you want to show, because like credit is like your resume for mm -hmm for you know the the adult world so with yeah. that you have to create that resume where you can show people you know how to manage money and you're able to um you know pay them back if you're trying to get a loan or anything like that so. oh Andre, what great wisdom i feel like i can go out into the real world now and be an adult That's yeah <laughs> i hope so <laughs> um, and this is actually our last question is, <clears throat> is there anything you missed from the time you were at northwestern Ooh. That's a great question. Just like the small like traditions that, not even small, but just traditions that we had like on the team, whether that was like, um, yeah, uh, what is it like dredge? <laughs> I can't really go into what the dredge is. Um, <laughs> but uh, just different things like that, uh, um, like giving back uh, with just a group of like familiar faces that you you know that you share a struggle with. I think just that opportunity to have a brotherhood where it's so, so like strong. Um, and being in a professional lens, like every, like you get into these different environments here and everyone has a family, everyone's going home like with their kids and their wives and like in comparison to college. Yeah, in comparison to college, like you're in the dorms or you have roommates <laughs> and you are just like kicking it. So I, I kind of like miss those like where you can really just kick back and like, you have the homies in the in the apartment or in the dorm. You guys are just relaxing, or mm -hmm. um, you know, watching games together and things like that. Um, I think that was like great. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just like those different festivals that you would have with with your guys. That, you know, we were respectable friends, and, mm -hmm. and you just had a great time. Whether well, that was just in the back of someone's yard, just kicking it, yeah. um, playing some, you know frisbee or whatever <laughs> so obviously don't take your moments for granted um, definitely do not yeah definitely yeah. Mm -hmm. all right Monshu, that's all the time that we have um thank you so much for answering all of our questions you were fantastic i'm sure that a lot of people learned a lot of things and you had such good wisdom and your story is fantastic it's such a success congratulations for being on the giants now i'm super excited and i'm going to continue following you and keeping in touch um, maybe we can even have a follow-up interview later in time. Um, so everyone, thank you so, so much for tuning in. This is end of round four of Live with the Professional. Enjoy your evenings. Happy Friday and happy weekend. Bye, Montre. Thank you, everyone. Blessings. Thank you. <laughs>